but there's a deeper thing that's going on for me in um, in awareness of what's going on on the earth. Yep. Because um, I mean, I personally believe, and I you know see this is that we're currently even us sitting here, the way we live, is unsustainable. Exactly. For, for our for our birth. Exactly. Um, and we do need to make a massive change for us to be here. Yep. For any length of time in the future. Yep. Um, which I'm, I'm, I can deal with that. Yep. In, in, well, I might not be able to deal with that. Can I just answer that part and then we'll go on to the other parts that you want to ask? Yeah. And every I see a shift in the feminine is what I was going to get to. Yeah, so. Everything that is happening right now to the earth is unsustainable, certainly. Mm. And the question we need to ask ourselves, though, is what do we change to make it sustainable? Now, the answer that many of you will probably think of is, oh, we could do this thing and we can do that thing and we can do this thing and we can do that thing. My answer to you is, you change your soul and everything will change around you automatically. So if you change your soul and the soul becomes more loving, and the way you change your soul is release the parts of that, of it that are inside of you that are not loving. If you release that, what will happen is automatically every single thing around you will automatically begin to change and all of the attractions will change and everyone's consciousness will begin changing as well as a result of your soul changing right? you won't have to go out and do a protest right because what is a protest it's an intellectual expression of your and what does that create more and in the end it doesn't work it hasn't has it you look at it really honestly it hasn't if you change yourself inside of yourself at the soul level, you change your feelings and emotions, welcome, you change your feelings and emotions inside of you, what will happen is automatically everything around you will begin changing. Now you'll notice this a lot, again begging back to children, when a parent changes their soul condition by releasing a causal emotion, the children around them, and whether they're adults or not is immaterial, the children around them change automatically, they automatically change. And can I just ask a question about that? Mm -hmm. About parents? Can I, can I just finish answering that question though? And because it, because what, I want, what I'm getting at here is most of the time what we do with, our own, with what we're seeing around us is we see it as what's happening external to us. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And many times we look at them cutting down a tree or a clear felling or whatever they're doing and we, we think that that is actually external to us, but actually mm -hmm. our soul condition assisted the creation of that. Mm -hmm. And if I release my soul condition and make, and make it into another type of condition, that my soul will no longer have a part in creating that. Mm -hmm. right? Now, to give you an example, if my soul has an anger in it towards clear felling, I am actually creating more clear felling. Because what do I need to trigger that anger? I need someone to do that in front of me, right? Mm -hmm. And once I get to a point where I no longer have that anger and rage inside of me and I've dealt with the underlying emotion, which was going to be related to a childhood emotion about my future or scared about things taken off me or lots of other types of childhood emotions that happen and are created that I don't experience, what if I release those, all of a sudden people who are doing the clear feeling will actually start looking at why they're doing it. And that will happen automatically without me having to protest or without me having to do anything else. Does that make sense? Mm. I know it sounds like, no, that's not going to work. How, you know? Because you're not attracting it anymore. Exactly, you're not attracting it anymore. And, and, and the energy you're putting into it when you're really feeling angry and fearful is no longer there because you've got your energy, you've got your energy for love or whatever else. Totally. Remember, remember, I think I said in the introductory thing that here's our soul, right? I'll, I'll constantly say, what, it, what is your soul? Your soul is your passions, your desires, emotions, emotions yeah. intentions, memories, intentions, these are all part of your soul, right? Fear. Now, if my intention is to fight somebody every time I see something happening that's wrong, if that's my intention, I, I'm determining firstly that it's wrong, so that's 
me making a judgment. Then I then go down the track of fighting them because I now am putting a, you know, oh, what am I doing now? I'm putting all of my passion and desire into opposing things. Mm -hmm. But what created that thing? My own soul condition of something even deeper within me that I'm actually not facing. That's what created that thing. And collectively we all create in this manner. Could I just interject there for a second? You mentioned collectively. Uh, at the moment there's a lot of angst in, uh, in Tasmania. Uh, tens of thousands of people objecting to guns and, and the Forestry Commission, whatever they call it, yeah. over here. Um, say if, um, if one single person, say any one of us here who's feeling particular angry, uh, change their soul condition. You've still got another 19,999 people who are, who are uh, wanting to tear guns to pieces. Exactly. Um, now, is that just going to mean that, uh, well, before your first um, DVD, um, I used to think you'd go into another dimension where guns wouldn't exist, but now I'm, not, I'm rather confused now. So. <coughs> what will happen is that uh, if you change to the point if you change this soul to the point where you're actually at one with God, mm -hmm. every single person in Tasmania will know automatically that you're in that new condition. And you'll be able to do things like healing, you'll be able to, you'll be able to do things that people from all around will just flock to you mm -hmm. for your advice and your, you know, they'll flock to you. That's what will happen. And they'll flock to you not because you're anything special but because you're now connected with God and you're in harmony with God so much, you're now at one with God. And God can now channel all of her energy. God can channel all of her thoughts and her feelings through you. Right? Now, you imagine yourself in that place. Do you think the other 19,000 are going to listen now? Well, they might not know it, though. They will know it, for sure. For sure. <coughs> how, how did a movement begin from a, from a single man in the first century? To, be, to, to change the world, really, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. right? How did that begin? From one person. Mm -hmm. So they'll know. Mm -hmm. And you imagine if there's 10 of you, or you imagine just 20 of you in that condition here in Tasmania. The effect is, is going to be so enormous. It's, the effect is that once you get into an alignment condition with God, every single person on this earth, whether they're aware of it or not, will know. Right? And they will, they will be drawn to you or repelled by you depending on how much truth they want in their life or how much truth they want to avoid. But it's your soul that is the powerful thing. So if I'm, just, if I'm having this anger and I'm one of 20,000 people having this anger and, and there's one less people or person now having the anger, now there's only 19,999 yeah, yeah. having anger, obviously. Yeah. There's got to be a better effect. But if my soul was in an one-minute condition without this anger, that will, and that compensates in many cases for millions of people in a, state, in a different state. Right. And so it's important for you to understand that you might begin the journey, deal with one emotion, and that might, you might just see a little bit of change around you. You know, you might see your children change a bit. You might see the work situation change a bit and so forth. And then you deal with another emotion. You see this bit change and that bit change. You deal with another. And before you know it, what's happening is the sphere of changes around you is getting bigger and bigger with each emotion you release. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. Now, ha have it saying, well, if I don't start that process, I'm hardly having any effect on someone else. Well, that's true right at the beginning. What you're saying is true right at the beginning. What's one less person than 20,000? Not much. But if one doesn't start the process, will the others ever start it? Like, you've also got to look at it that way too. So you're, what you're saying is slightly different from the 100 monkey syndrome. Yeah. 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 The most powerful things that have ever happened in the world usually have come from one person changing. You think about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like you think of all the powerful things that have happened that have affected you and affected the way you think and affected you on your spiritual journey. How many of them involved like 100,000 people? Most of them, didn't they involve one person? <laughs> you think about it. And while the 100,000 people doing it is fantastic and you feel lots of joy about that, 
It's the one person generally who inspires you, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Interesting that, isn't it? Mm. So you can all become inspirations for everyone around you. Yeah. In the same manner. So understand that this is your soul. This is the real you. This is the power you have. When these passions and desires and emotions are exercised in disharmony with God, then you're going to create some very negative things in your universe, which happens to also be mine. <laughs> right? And if your passions and desires and emotions and, thing, and intentions are harmonious with God's love, you're going to create some very powerful things that are going to affect me in a powerful way, whether I'm conscious of it or not. It will affect me. Something to think about. Are you saying that, that the harmonious... Um, emotions are more powerful than disharmonious emotions? Or, or, yeah. Totally. And this is uh, like every, every person who's in a, better, in, a, in a condition of closer love to God, mm -hmm. so in other words, in a, in a better condition of love, has a far more powerful effect on the world than people that are in negative conditions. Like, you give you an example. And all of these people I've just mentioned that inspire you, does a murderer that you see on death row inspire you? No. You hear about it, don't you, and you think, but, but does it change your life? Not really in most cases, does it? No. It doesn't inspire you. So who had the most power over you? Wasn't it the person who acted positively in their life? And, taught, and, and, the love, yeah. and, and reflected love in their life? Yeah. Wasn't that the thing that had the most power over you? Yeah. Love has a lot more power than any negative experience.